This old town filled with sin It'll swallow you in And if you've got some money to burn Take it home right away You've got three years Hey friends, what's going on? So in this lesson, I'm going to show you how to play Sin City by the Flying Burrito Brothers, right? Or you might know it through Graham Parsons, who of course was in that band and wrote this song. A fantastic song, and I've only learned this one in the past week, but I'm excited to share it with you here. I'm going to talk about the chords and the strumming, the chord progression. I'll talk about the intro. I'll show you about three different ways to play it, depending on what you want to sort of go for there. And um, I'll talk about, you know, just the capo, whether or not you want to play it with the Flying Burrito Brothers album version or this live version or this tribute album version. Uh, a few different notes there as far as making sure you're in the right key with your heroes of guitar here. So uh, let's get to this lesson, but let me begin by saying, check out my website, playsongnotes.com to get this PDF I made for this song. It's uh, handmade with care by me. It shows you everything you need to know, the lyrics, the chords, tabs for the intro, the progressions, the strumming, uh, a true labor of love. And this is the uh, 272nd uh, lesson I've made. So if you like this, check out my website and there are many, many more of these and many more video lessons as well. But with that said, y'all, let's get into the lesson now. Here's what I'm going to cover. Jump ahead if you know what you're looking for and um, let's do it. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about are the capo and the chords, right? So how to make the sounds that you'll you'll need to play this song and, and play along with the Flying Burrito Brothers version or the Graham Parsons version or a few of the other versions. So uh, the quick skinny on it is this with the capo. You want to use the first fret if you uh, first fret capo using the chords I show you here to play along with the Flying Burrito Brothers, like the album version, um, there's also a Beck and Emmylou Harris tribute version that also uses capo in the first fret using the chords I'm gonna show you. But there are Graham Parsons live recordings of this. For example, him and Emmylou, uh, it's the complete reprise sessions version is no capo, right? And there's also a no capo version of the Flying Burrito Brothers and Gene Clark on the live radio version. So either capo first fret or no capo. Um, again, it's all about if you want to play along with a certain version or not. Just just keep that in mind, right? Um, and as I said before, I think the Beck and Emmy Lou Harris version, um, for me just coming into this song, I, I like listening to that one the most while I was learning it because it's the most recently recorded, so it just sounds really good. Uh, the duet aspects of it are really great, but you also can hear the guitar really well. So that's sort of the the most um, the version that really hooked me. Uh, although I love listening to the Graham versions as well for sure. So that's the the capo notes, right? And then the chords we're gonna need. So this is a three chord song, which is great, right? So the chords are gonna be basically uh, a D major chord, right? Uh, we're gonna need a G chord, okay? I typically play the G just with two fingers like this. And what's happening is I'm just doing third fret on the sixth string, I'm muting the fifth string with my ring finger, I'm just not pushing it down, right? But you, you can do it like that or you can do it like this, right? And then uh, of course you need an A. Now I have an A7 written here, right? Um, a and A7 I'm treating as interchangeable. You can use a regular A major if you want. I find A7 easier to switch to because it's only two fingers. But um, it also, I think, just sounds just fine. So that's up to you. Uh, there is one part in the song, too, where you'll need a D7 chord, right? So you just have a D and a D7. Um, so the chords are, are pretty straightforward, um, very, very beginner-friendly chords, which is great. So that's what we're going to be using as the, the core building blocks, right? Now, um, the next thing I'll talk about here is the rhythm and the timing and the strumming. Quite simply, this song is a waltz. It's in three-quarter time, right? So we're going to have, uh, instead of one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, right? This is typical for a lot of rock songs or country songs. But a waltz is going to be in uh, three beats per measure instead of four. So that's usually going to have the accent on the one count, right? So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And what I recommend doing, if this is new to you or uh, anything like that, is put the song on, right? and just you know mute your strings and just strum along you can also do it patting your leg right if you want to get the feel of that counting it's just 
uh, pat your leg or just strum a guitar with no chords to really get the feel of the one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three right? Because that's gonna be important for what we learn next. Now, the strumming patterns I'm gonna use here, let's use a D major chord as our reference, right? Um, basically, it's gonna be, the simplest one is all down strums, but on the, on the one count, what I like to do is just pluck the bass note of the chord, maybe the bass two notes, right? Just, you know, basically the, the bassier bottom part of the chord, and then on the two and the three counts, I'm gonna do the full chord, right? So that would be like this. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. So the one count stands out, right? Because it's, in this case, I'm actually doing it quieter than what I showed you here. One, two, three, one, two, three, one. But in both those examples, the one count stands out because it, it, it's, it's um, played a little bit differently than the two and the three counts, right? So again, the one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. You could do that on the G chord. And the A chord, right? Or A7. Now, if you want to spice it up a little bit and add a little bit of, um, you know, um, heaviness to it, you could do a down, down, up, down, up, 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 one, two, and three, and 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 right? That would sound like this. Right? A7, one, two, and three, and one, two, and But again, I would start with the simple one, and especially because this song is very, um, it's not one that you want to overdo the instrumentation on, at least in my opinion, right? So, hey everyone, and a third strumming pattern I wanted to add in here was this one. It's going to sound like this, right? It's going to be a down, up, 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 one, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and one. Too. You know, if we were to, to sort of uh, play it with some the chords, it'd be la da da do 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 do. So what I'll say about this one is, unlike the other strumming patterns, this one is is not going to do the um, just the thickest bass notes on the one count. Like the other ones I was talking about are like. Right, where the one counts just playing one or two strings. This one that I just showed you, the most recent one, it's always all the strings of the chord. So it's a bit um, less precise and it's more just a casual, you're just strumming all the chord uh, strings all the time. And that makes it in a way, I think, easier to play. Um, and I've just found myself sort of settling into that as I've continued to play this song. So I wanted to share this one as well, but hey, pick the strumming pattern that works for you. And if all these are giving you trouble, just try doing a down strum on the one count, right? La da da, da dee dee dee, dee dee one, two, three, 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 one. This will help you get the groove, you know, get your way, uh, through the song, feel comfortable, build up some confidence, and from there, you can start to add in the other strumming patterns if and as you see fit. But I wanted to share all these, pick what works for you, and go from there. Uh, that's what you need for your chords and your strumming pattern. Now, let's look at the, um, if you look at the song structure here, it's just gonna be verse, chorus, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, right? It's just a verse and a chorus, there's no bridge, and that's pretty nice. So the chord progressions will look like this. Um, it's basically moving between D and the A7 and the G, right? Uh, it's, it's, again, nothing too crazy. Everything is one measure each for the most part. You're never doing any split measures or you don't have any fast changes or anything like that. If you want to, you can add little runs and fills at certain parts, but that's not gonna be what I'm gonna teach in this lesson just because I think that um, the real joy of this song, I think, just becomes... Uh, you know, getting this progression down, strumming it in a way that works, and then if you can, singing it. And if, I mean, the, the duet aspect is what makes it really shine, in my opinion. So um, let's basically go through the chord progressions using the strumming pattern I showed you, right? So let's use a simple strumming pattern, right? The one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. 
Okay, so I'm gonna play through the verse now. I'm just gonna count, but I'm gonna count using the melody of the vocal to give you reference, all right? So let's go from, from uh, again, from left to right. We do the top row, second row, third row, fourth row, right? So, okay, let's get ready to do this and chord progression for the verse starting now, all right? So we're gonna start with, let's count in two measures. So one, two, three, one, two, three, D, A, A, D, two, G, and D for two measures, D again. A7 for two measures, then to D, and A7, and D to G, back to D, A7, and to D, and D7, and end the chorus, right? Then G, A7, to D, G, D, A7 for two measures, and to G, A7, and D, G, and D, A7, and D, D, okay? So that was the verse and the chorus, just doing the simple strumming pattern there. Hopefully you can sort of um, see, hear that progression and hear the melody at the same time and see, see how they fit together. So um, yeah, now what I'll do now is I'll, I'll just play through the first verse and the first chorus using just what I showed you, that strumming pattern and that progression, and we'll start to put it all together, right? So just take it real slow, right? And remember, I'm gonna count in two measures to get going here. So one, two, three, one. This old town is filled with sin. It'll swallow you in if you want some money to burn. Take it home right away. You've got three years to pay, but Satan is waiting his turn. D7 and this old courthouse can <laughs> courthouse can uh, leave me in the poorhouse. Let's do that line again. This old earthquake's gonna leave me in the poorhouse. It seems like this whole world's insane. To G, the 30th first floor, a gold-plated door won't keep out the Lord's burning rain. Okay, now I'll just say that at the very end of the song, I wanna play those last two lines again, it looks like this. It's the exact same thing, except at the very end, you're gonna to go to a G before the final D. So let's do those last two lines. On the 30th first floor, a gold-plated door won't keep out the Lord's burning rain. Okay. Uh, so stay on the G as long as you want there, slow it down, and then go to the D. And at some point, you want to let that D ring, and that's your final chord of the song, right? So that's how to do a simple strumming uh, playthrough of this song. And I'll do a full end-to-end -end playthrough if you want to reference that as well for practice. But um, that's basically what you're going to need, which is the cool part. Now, let me talk about the intro to this song, okay? So... Um, I I learned this with a solo acoustic guitar, right? I like to sort of imitate what I hear in the, the records I listen to. So uh, I have three different intros that are tabbed out for you. Uh, one of them is sort of what I put together inspired by the Flying Burrito Brothers lead guitar. I just sort of came up with a solo acoustic version of that. So let's look at that one first. Basically that one's gonna be four measures, right? We're gonna count into a D, so one, two, three, D, two, three, A7. G, D, right? Just those four measures. So D, two, three, A, seven, G, D, right? Now, here's what I tabbed out. So we're gonna come into the, uh, let me just play it for you on straight first, right? Let me play it again. Right? So it's pretty subtle. It's nothing too crazy. You're kind of just casually picking. Right? So you could do it without strumming too. Now here's what I did there. Basically, uh, the first three counts are just plucking into a D chord from a D sus two. So those are the first three plucks. It's a D chord with the open, um, the thinnest strings open. And then on the one count of the first measure, we're gonna. Pluck that D sus2, right, with the open uh, high E string, and then hammer on that second fret of the high E string. 
right? So hammering on is moving our uh, left middle finger down firmly on the string. Do another strum of the D if you want on the two chord. And then on the second, um, on the two count, in the second measure, we're going to the A, A7 and we're gonna have our pinky down on the third fret of the high E string. And then we're gonna do uh, with our ring finger down on the second fret of the high E string. And then uh, lift up the high E string so it's open. So what's happening here is in this second measure, we wanna basically get this melody. But we want to do that while we're playing an A or an A7 chord, right? So then it's basically going to be done again with our pinky, with our ring finger, and then with no finger at all, okay? So you can kind of start to hear the melody here, right? Okay, that's the melody that I'm going to infuse in all these chords. So after the A7, we're going to go to a G, but the thing here is you want the second string, third fret, to be your uh, the highest note that your ear hears. So basically you don't want to play the high E string when you first play the G. And then uh, after two counts, on that three count of the G measure, you do want to play the open highest string. So I just play a whole G chord with the open E string, right? And then you're going to go to a regular D. And on that final D you do, you kind of want that second string again, third fret and the second string, to be your highest note that your, your ear hears. So maybe um, don't play the thinnest string, or if you do play the thinnest string, don't, you know, don't, don't uh, emphasize it, kind of keep it subtle. Just your, with, with your picking, kind of emphasize that second and third string. So again, this sort of arrangement for the intro sounds like this. Now, there are a couple other tabs I'll show you here. Uh, let's look at this Beck and Emmylou Harris. This is from the Tribute album, which I think is, again, a really great recording. So this one's gonna sound like this. Then you start, right? So uh, it's mainly the same. It's a little bit long, it's twice as long, but it's again, just the same three chords. I'd say what's different here is at one point on that second measure, right, with that A, you have a, you're going from an A sus4 with your pinky down on the uh, second string, third fret, to a regular A, then you go to a D, then you're gonna walk up on the low E string, open to second to third. And you can do it with your index and middle fingers if you want or you can do it with your thumb if you want on that second fret. Do whatever's comfortable for you if you want to play this version. For this G though, what you want to do is play it like I show you here with the uh, ring finger on the uh, low E string and pinky on the high E string. And the reason why is you want to go to a G major seven or it's a G, a G seven, not a G major seven. So again, what I'm talking about is walking up on the A string from open to second to fourth, and then for the final D. Here, here it is one more time. All right. Sounds nice on the on that uh, recording. I honestly don't play it this way anymore. I think that four chord that four chord version I worked out is what I prefer. But I wanted to show this one to you as well. And also in my tab, I include this this tab for a very similar version to the Beck one. This is from a YouTube cover I saw from a group called Rebel Machine, and they just do something very similar, right? D A D to G D, and then walk up. So uh, there you have it. That's how you play the intro of this song. And um, whichever one you pick there, if you do any one at all, you could just do regular strumming. You could just take a D and just, just strum a D, and that could be your intro, right? This old town is filled with sin. 
it'll swallow you in and you get the idea so that's all you need for this song really you got the intro you got the strumming pattern you got the chord progression uh, capo if you want to play along with a certain version or you want to change it to fit your voice but you should be good to go. So this has, again, been a, a dear joy of a song to learn. Uh, just reveling in the vocal, like the duets that are that are sung um, in the Graham and Emmy Lou versions, but also the Beck and the Emmy Lou versions. So good, so good. Um, so it's been it's been a pleasure to learn this song, and I hope this has been helpful for you. So again, check out the website, playsongnotes.com, to get the PDF that I made for this. It's a great uh, like little piece of paper to keep in your guitar notebook with you and um you know play it forever going forward you know as we have good songs like this to keep us company so thanks for watching everyone check out my other lessons if you like this one and i'll leave you now bye bye